The extract I'm going to be reading is from um, my new book, which is um, Girl on the Run. And um, Girl on the Run follows the story of Abby, who is a 28-year-old um, who has recently started her own business after having um, watched one too many episodes of The Apprentice. And um, she's having a great time doing it, but also it's taking its toll on other parts of her life, um, namely her love life, um, but also her, um, her health and fitness. And um, a series of events happens that essentially um, persuades Abby to do the unthinkable um, and join a running club with a view to um, training for a half marathon. And um, she is not the fittest and she is not the healthiest. So she has turned up at the running club, given it her first go, and it's all been an absolute disaster. Um, and she decides that before she's going to show her face there again, um, she's actually going to spend the month trying to get fit um, so that she can um, fit in slightly more. August is when I get fit. Actually, that's not strictly true. August is when I get to a level of fitness that teeters on something comparable with that of an average 28-year-old. Only then will I feel ready to tackle the slow group at running club. It proves to be one of the most unrelentingly difficult periods in my life. I question daily, no hourly, why I ever agreed to this running lark. I mean me, of all people. It's been so long since I dieted that I've genuinely forgotten how dull and unyielding the whole thing is. I start off on the fast slim milkshake diet, but find myself drinking both shakes meant for breakfast and lunch before 10 a.m., eating my two healthy snacks at 10.30, then scavenging from other people's lunches for the rest of the day. Then I read an article in Grazia about a new dieting technique that involves photographing all food before you eat it. The idea is that it makes you more conscious of what you're consuming and therefore more in control. It's going swimmingly until day two when I have a lunch meeting with Bob McHarry, the chief executive of a marketing company based in Manchester. Bob was, I thought, fully ensconced in conversation with the waiter when I subtly whipped out my camera and took a quick snap. I'd have got away with it if the flash hadn't gone off. Instead, Bob and the waiter whipped round their necks in shock, leaving me bumbling some crap about the camera being my grandmother's and the flash going off because I was trying to change the batteries. But needless to say, it didn't wash. And we continued with the lunch, but Bob spent the whole time looking at me through narrowed eyes as if I was a shifty double agent trying to get inside information on his company by taking pictures of something. He clearly couldn't work out what. And I didn't feel able to say I was only after photographic evidence of my Caesar salad. I'm now a member of my local Diet Busters Club, and it's a fascinating experience. The leader, Bernie, is a short and, to be brutally honest, not particularly slim woman in her 50s. The other notable thing about Bernie is her rare and remarkable talent for talking. Bernie can take a subject you'd think it impossible to discuss for more than 30 seconds and stretch it out over an entire half-hour class. Take last week's topic, pasta. Bernie took no less than 30 minutes to demonstrate, essentially, that you get more pieces of dried spaghetti in 50 grams than you do if you opt for spirals. She used flip charts, Venn diagrams and a frankly astonishing number of props. She had the group in thrall as she teased us with what 10 grams of spaghetti looked like on the scale. Then 25, then at last 50. 20 minutes in, I thought she must have exhausted the issue until, genius, she announced we'd do a role play. I can't decide whether this makes Bernie the greatest public speaker since Martin Luther King or the dullest woman I've ever come across. Still, it's finally working and I've started to lose weight. Only a few pounds, admittedly, but it turns out that all the booze, fat and sugar I was throwing down my neck really wasn't doing me any good and eating more vegetables and less rubbish is having an effect. The exercise is more of a mixed bag. After my experience on the treadmill, I decide to vary my re regime before I get into the hardcore running. So at Bernie's suggestion, I take up hula hooping, foolishly, albeit temporarily, convinced by her claim that she lost five pounds in one week while doing it while she was ironing. The only way this could possibly be true is if A, she was responsible for the laundry of a 500 room hotel, and B, she had the agility of a trapeze artist. According to Bernie's Diet Busters exercise workbook, hula hooping is the ideal exercise because it develops balance, enhances flexibility and sculpts the thighs, buttocks and arms, all of which sounded good to me. Add to that the fact that it burns 306 calories an hour. By the time I sent off for my mail order hula hoop, 
and watched excitedly as the postman wheeled it out of his van and down my path. I was completely sold on the idea. Of course, there's a catch to the fact that hula hooping burns 306 calories an hour. To achieve that, you'd have to do it for an hour. I can't manage it for five seconds, which by my maths means that I'm burning less than half a calorie per go. Anyway, I'm not ruling out other forms of exercise and remain open to suggestions, but I've gone back to the running. That, after all, is what I'm here for, to complete a half marathon, though when and where has yet to be decided. It hasn't been all bad. In fact, I'm starting to rather enjoy the admittedly very short and very slow run that I take every morning. As my return to the club looms, however, I start to get an uneasy feeling. I briefly consider backing out when an email arrives in my inbox the weekend before the big day. Abby, Jess tells me you're returning to running club on Monday. Well done. Please be secure in the knowledge that I'll be there, sick bags at the ready. Tom, I shake my head and compose a response. Dear Tom, thank you for that vote of confidence. I can assure you that no sick bags are required. This time I'll be with the slow group, which I'm hoping even someone with my level of, of athletic prowess can manage. Abby. I press send and bite my thumbnail. That's it, Abby. An open declaration of intent. There's no backing out now.